Baltimore is more than crabs in the wire. And I'm here to share the real stories of the real, true, talented people in the city who don't get the recognition that they deserve. Please sit back, relax, subscribe, and watch how we make the whole world want to be more like us. What up, Baltimore? Here another week. God willing. Great day. Uh, last week's interview was crazy. Shout out to Matt Pressbury. I don't want to tell you what it was about. Just got to go check on the last week's video. Share that video, too. Send it to people. Remember to like, click, and subscribe to this channel as well. Uh, but today, got another special guest of mine. Uh, he does many things, many things, man. Uh, but definitely a husband, an entrepreneur, and somebody I like to call a brother to me. So without further ado, I'm going to get right into it because I'm excited. And I don't even know what I'm about to hear. My man, Larry. What's up, Larry? What's going on, man? Happy to be here, bro. Man, just a long time coming. Yeah, man. About, you know, about 15 years? 15, 16, something like that. Ooh. It's been a long time, man. Been, been through, I remember we uh, met in the car club days. Yeah. Uh, bow tie boys and bubbles. Met, I still love the bubbles. paint shop, yeah. yeah. Still love the bubbles. But we're going to get into that, man. But I'm just happy to have you here. So, man, we're in Baltimore here at the famous, world famous, Rim Source Motorsports, 4810 Belair Road. Black owned, black operated. Uh, and it'll all make sense, I think, by the end of the end of the interview, why I chose to do it here, why I asked to do it here. Thank you for um, opening up the door for that to happen today. They're not typically open. <laughs> this is a Sunday we're, you know, we're filming. So uh, definitely, uh, this is a joyous occasion. But uh, anywho, let's just start from the basics. Larry, who are you and where are you from? Uh, my name's Larry Spriggs. Um, entrepreneur. I kind of, I want to say I don't like using that word. Um, uh, small business owner. Um, own a business in Annapolis, Maryland. Been there for eight years. Uh, I got a wheel line called Wheels by Larry, and I currently have a tech startup um, called Wheel Connects that I'm working on right now. Um, I'm originally from Calvert County, Maryland, small county in Maryland, um, but I grew up in Glen Burnie, and part of my life I spent um, in Lower Anne Arundel County. But yeah, um, I think the better parts of my life I spent in Glen Burnie and up in Baltimore, hanging out with you guys and like being in the car club scene <laughs> and all that stuff, man, kind of like really shaped a lot of parts of my life. So, Larry, a lot of people love to hear about probably everything you're about to say, because you said a little bit of it at the beginning of the interview, you know, about what you currently are doing, where you're at, but how did you get there? Like, for a second, rewind time, and think about where you were prior to be able to be to a point where you could sit on the seat and say what you're about to say. So think about what happened prior to that. What, what, what was something that you faced that Hit, hit you hard and, and could have took you down, but you, you fought through it. Uh, I would have to say it's two moments, um, and not to take up too much time, but no. it's just it, both are like really pivotal, pivotal moments that really changed a lot of my life. Um, the first one, I was I was a horrible student. Um, my whole school, everything, high school, middle school, college, everything, I just was a horrible student, man. I failed the ninth grade. I literally got a report card that was straight E's multiple times. And having to have that in your book bag and know you got to walk home and take that to your parents, like, it was no greater fear. Even though I knew it was coming, it was no greater fear than having to bring a straight E report card. That just mean, meant that I just didn't even try. Um, I was always like a kid that was all over the place and trying to do new stuff, and I never really took school seriously. And I think that moment of having that report card in my book bag and the fear that I felt right there and having to take that to my parents, um, mm. There has never been a moment in my life that's been more fearful than that. And even though it was a bad situation, being able to see that I could overcome that situation and, and deal with the repercussions of my actions and um, failing in ninth grade and my father ended up coming and getting me from my mother. I don't want to say he took me from my mother, but he just came in and moved me in with him to try to help get me back on path. Um, I grew up with my mother in a one-bedroom apartment, me and my mother and my brother, and... My mother sacrificed a lot to make sure that me and my brother had everything that we wanted and sometimes didn't even need um, just in life. So my father, he had a better situation. He came and brought me down to him in uh, Lower Anne Arundel County and I moved to a school there. And that, that moment in life was probably one of the lowest parts for me. But like I said, it showed me that even when like you're at your bottom, like it's still somewhere further up you can go. And um, I got to a new school and it literally went from a situation where the coolest people in the school I was in before were the people who were like, we could cut class, we didn't have to do no work, like 
you didn't have to get good grades to be cool in the school I was at. And I went to a little small school where everybody kind of knew what everybody's grades looked like. Everybody knew if you were cutting class. Like, everybody's parents kind of knew each other. So it just changed everything. The coolest kid in the school was somebody who got straight A's. Um, so it just gave me a different perspective on life. All right, so yeah, and the second part was when I opened up my shop. And I know for most people that would be like this glorious moment. And for me, a small part of it was. But it took so much for it to even happen. You know? When I first told one of my close, close friends that I was going to open up a shop, like, they laughed at me, like, on the phone. She laughed at me like I was Kevin Hart on stage. And it, like, really bothered me. And, like, in some ways, it kind of put a fire inside of me to, like, really make it happen. And when I opened my shop, I lost everything. And a lot of people don't know that. Like, I really took a leap of faith. I jumped out of this place that we're in right now called Rim Source, which was a train going uphill. Um, it was not stopping. Like, it was getting growing and getting better and better every day. But I just knew I wanted my own thing. So I literally jumped out of here. I didn't have any money. Um, I lost my apartment. Um, I lost my car, got repossessed. And I knew that as long as I could get through that tough part, because I've been at the bottom before, that as long as I got through it, like, better, better things were going to come. And I stuck it out. I started my shop with one wheel on the wall and been in business for eight years. Mm. Wow. Uh, there's just so much to take in right there. Those, those two stories about overcoming adversity. And I remember, uh, I, I'll just say this. I'll be brief myself, you know, because I'm letting yours marinate in because certain stuff hit me because I know you, you know what I mean? Um, I remember uh, pulling up the drill pop at a red and white 94 Caprice. That was my first one before I met you. Strawberries and cream. And um, I was selling clothes out the trunk of my car. And I never forget a girl who's still in my life. She a, she a homie, you know. Never been like more than a homie, uh, and she know the story. So whatever, you know. And I was um, it was something. And she basically was like, "You gonna just sell clothes all your life? Like, why won't you just get a job? Like, this is cool, but just get a job." And it wouldn't have bothered me if she wasn't so close to me, you know. Uh, cause I was hearing stuff, you know, people was hating because they thought I had more than what I did. And I was putting myself in that position to, I take self accountability, stunting, you know, feeling like that's the way to success. But when somebody who's riding with you, you know, been through the, you know, seeing come up, whatever, tell you to get a job, you know what I mean? And, and who's going to continue to buy these little shirts. And then years later, you know, you just sold 19,000 of those shirts, you know, it speaks in volumes, you know, uh, it's a hard work and. So you like you just don't forget, you know. So that that hit home with me because I remember looking at that first Be Easy shirt, uh, that paint on it, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, to the point where some people uh, wear my clothes and uh, they will fall apart in the washing machine because it was the wrong type of paint. Paint it's different types of paint we know now, but you know you didn't know that to the point where now you know I've seen somebody say, "Oh, I had this shirt for five years," or oh, "I've had this shirt." You know, for 14 years, and I still can wear it. I might not wear the style no more, but you know, I keep it. Um, I think it means something different, man. And um, yeah, I get it. I, I, my point is, I get it. You know, I remember that that dollar in the dream. Look, I dropped out of college for this. Um, so, hey, man, it's all or nothing. Whew. All right, man. So, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so shocked. Like, you know, I, I know this guy, but you also don't know people as you kind of life get more busy and things change. You know, and so. We don't always know. We just know what we see, right? So, with that being said, though, but, but tell us your story. Like, you know, I love to hear business stories. Okay, we talked about personal stuff. Where you from? What you've been through? But what businesses or business do you have, and how did it start? You know, just kind of give everybody a feel of the entrepreneur. You, whatever you want to let us know about entrepreneur. Larry. All right. So first, I always got to shout out my boy Pat. I shout him out every video, every interview I do. Um, he's definitely the person who. Let me understand that even when you work for somebody, like you got to be your own person inside of those brands. Um, he was an M1 basketball player, and he played on a bunch of the different streetball tours, but he always made sure to brand himself outside of that so that if anything ever happened to the tours, he would be able to still um, live his life and do whatever he needed to do. Um, so, yeah, so I pretty much told y'all about how, like, I lost everything getting my shop, um, but... Even before then, just getting to Rim Source so I could be an entrepreneur, because I always knew I wanted my own shop. I basically started working for Free Force Shop when the guy's shop was like, hey man, I'll do whatever I can do if I can just learn, because that's all I want to do is learn. So I worked there for about a month, 
I ended up going to a bigger shop in Cabot County, Maryland, down by where my father lived and got a job there. That's where I pretty much learned how to do all the mountain and balancing and everything like that. And um, really like got into the actual wheel game super, super heavy. I wouldn't say super heavy, mm-hmm. but heavy enough where I could learn. And at that time, I understood the whole personal brand and stuff. So I was utilizing Facebook and all the different social medias to kind of like put out there what I was doing. Um, and I already had a relationship with Rashad, who you know, who was in our car club, who worked at Rimsons. Yep. So like he's always kind of like watched and helped and guided me on like just different knowledge in the industry and what I should do. So he was what watching know about wheels. <laughs> so um, it just got to the point where they were seeing the work that I was doing down there. And literally, the craziest part is the same person who laughed at me was in the car with me when I got the phone call one night at one o'clock in the morning from Kevin and from Rashad saying, hey, come to work at Rimsource, like we need you. Mm. And I worked at Rimsource for three years and I told Rashad even when I started, like I really probably only want to be here for three years. Like my goal was to get here because I wanted to learn everything I need to learn so I could open up my own business. And it's going to come full circle, I'll get to that part, but I wanted to open up my own business. So, um, like I said, worked here for three years, finally said I wanted to leave. Um, I think it got to the point with me and Kevin, we, we, he was leaving, I was here, and we were both like, had our own customers and we would just get mixed up on stuff. And I just knew at a certain point, it was like, all right, like, I want to be a boss. He's the boss here. This is his, this is his dream. This is his empire. I need to go do my own. Cool. Um, so right. I found a real estate agent in Annapolis, Maryland, and me and him just went to go look at buildings one Sunday and pulled up to about five or six buildings. Well, I, I went, I was going with him on Monday. But Sunday, I went out myself to go look at the buildings that he sent me a list of. I pulled up to all of them. None of them was really good. I pulled up to the last one. I was like, this is the one. That Monday morning, he calls me. He's like, hey, man, all the ones on that list are gone except for one. Mm. And it was the one I wanted. So we pull up to it. We go in there. We look at it. It's a rat's nest. It's a hole in the wall. It's behind another building. And I'm just like, no, this is it. I can see it. Mm-hmm. I literally went home that night, photoshopped a picture of the building, posted it on Instagram. I, got, like, I, I just knew that I could make it work. Um, did the lease. I mean, did the um, lease application and all that, sent it in. And it was seven people that had power of attorney over the building. And they literally looked at my application and was just like, no. Like, we can't get it. He don't have no business experience. He's never had his own business. Um, he don't really got no credit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was living paycheck to paycheck. I didn't have money in the bank. I had a BMW. I had an apartment. But I didn't think to save money or nothing like that. Uh, and plus, I didn't plan to just open my shop right then and have money to do it. I just thought I was just going to be able to do it. And they told me no. And we fought him. Um, my real estate agent, Jesse Kelly, stood there with me. Basically, was like, hey, man, if you want this building, like, I'm going to go toe-to-toe with you, and we're going we're gonna to get it, him and my boy Ramon. And mm-hmm. we fought for about four months, just really, like, talking to them, letting them know what I'm going to do, like, telling them I'm going to upgrade the building, I'm going to do certain things. And one person out of the seven people stood up and was like, hey, okay, if he's going to do all these upgrades and renovate the building, that's a rat's nest, a rat's nest right now. Like, why not just let him have a chance? Worst case scenario, we put him out, we basically have a good building. And he didn't say that, but that's kind of what it implies. Mm-hmm. So they gave me a chance. That's all I needed. I started. I had one wheel in the, in the showroom, and my father helped me fix the showroom up to get it right. Um, had a grand opening. Been in business for eight years since. Um, and I've been blessed because I have one of my employees who started with me almost from day one. Um, shout out to Marcus. He actually runs my shop right now, and I was able to basically train him from ground up um, on all the stuff that I learned. Um, to the point where now he operates my shop on a full-time basis. And, yeah. Mm. But it's been a journey getting the shop off the ground and getting it running, but like I said, I'm in a blessed situation right now with that. Um, one of the other things that I was able to do, just being in business, I understood that in this will game, the people that came to my shop, they came to my shop with my advice on like what wills to get. So one day I'm literally standing in my bay, and I'm looking around my shop, and this is when the What's Free song came out, the um, Jay-Z, Meek Mills mm-hmm. one. Right, and right. Jay-Z was just talking about all this ownership stuff, 100% Ace of Spades. I'm literally looking at all these brands, and I'm just like, man, I tell these people what's cool. Like, why don't I have my own brand? Mm. I went home, and I told my wife, she's my fiance at the time. I'm like, yeah, I'm, about to, um, I'm about to fly to China. Like, I'm about to just start my own wheel line. And she's like, she knew I was a plan. So she's like, all right, well, look. I, I can see you like, <laughs> dear serious right now. Like, I felt that you were not playing when you said that. So she, she's like, look, I want to go with you. Like, let's go. So we booked out our flights, I think like two or three weeks later. We flew, didn't even know where I was going, didn't know who I was talking to. I got over there and I, I tried to like look at the websites and figure out where I could go to talk to somebody, but everything was just in Chinese. Their website's not updated. So I did hashtag Wheel Factory on Instagram and just scrolled until I found somebody that was in Shanghai because that's where I was at. 
And I found a lady, talked to her, met with her at her office. She gave me a whole layout on everything I needed to do. And I came here, sent a design of what I wanted to, and that started my wheel line. Yeah. Wow. What, what's the name of the wheel line? Wheels by Larry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I only did one edition of the wheel line um, because in doing that, I feel like I'm one of those people that like I always look for a bigger problem and a bigger problem to solve, a bigger problem to solve. Like I always just want to keep going. Right. So in doing that, I've seen another hole in the industry that nobody had pretty much fixed or patched up or just a way to like revolutionize it and make it run a little bit better. And that's why I started. Are there any other black owned rim owners that you so, When I first started, I thought I was the only person, but I actually got in touch with another guy. He called me. He's like, hey, man, you got your own wheel line. There's a guy named O in Texas. He's like, yeah, man, I thought I was the only black person. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I got my own line. So, yeah, so I know of him, and I believe it was one other person that had a multi-piece wheel line. Um, but I don't want to be quoted saying that. I was right, like, right, 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 gotcha. Only, but that's amazing. Bro. But can we say the first from Maryland? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking. Wow. Hmm. I heard that first right here. <laughs> right there. No, nah, man, but uh, I, I'll just say this. Um, well, well, let me not cut you off. It, did you say you have one other business as well? Or are you working on another business? Yeah, so so this is where it kind of comes full circle. Okay. So I'm working on a, a tech business right now called Will Connects. Um, we're basically... It's like um, an app? Um, more of a web platform. That okay. Fit, I like to call it an industry platform. Something that can mm. connect this whole industry. Because the wheel and tire industry, a lot of people don't know, is super fragmented. I mean, there's a couple giant companies that have a bunch of brands. But a lot of these brands are independently owned and operated. And that's what I've seen when I started my own brand. Um, it's so hard to get your items in the hands of shops um, around the world. It's easy to make a website and sell directly to consumers mm -hmm. because the consumers, um, they'll be the ones that go on there and buy it. But a lot of people don't know that the majority of the wheels sold in the United States are sold through shops, not online. A lot of people just think that online wins in every industry. This is one of the industries where online shopping just doesn't win. If you get a set of wheels, nine times out of ten, you got to take it to the shop anyway. Mm -hmm. So most people just go to shops to buy wheels. The problem is nobody's used the technology that everybody uses for the direct to consumers, where people are going online, the regular people are purchasing stuff, and giving that technology to shops to make it super easy for them to find wheels. So it kind of goes full circle now because now I'm back here working with Kevin at Rim Source to kind of put all this together and make it work. So I went from working here to having my own shop. And I think I needed that to understand what ownership felt like. Because sometimes when you're working for somebody and you see them telling you to do this or telling you to do that, you don't understand the stress that they're under. And you can't even see it when you're an employee. But once you actually have your own and you have employees, it changes your perception of what everything is. So I think that was my way of actually getting that lesson. Um, and now we are able to come back and kind of work together and build something bigger. Mm, so let me get this straight. You start out working at a wheel store. Get your dream job. Well, last job, last job you'll have was a dream job at the time here. They knew you always wanted to be your own. And they still took you in and showed you the game. Then you changed your Instagram name from Rim Source Line to your real name. Fast forward, get blessed with a shop. Realize there's a gap in the matrix, as I would like to say, as far as ownership and having a wheel of your own. And what's the name of your wheel company? Wheels by Larry. So you, and now Wheels by Larry, which is your name, which is what you changed your Instagram name to, basically, in a sense. Is now working back with the mentor yeah. to create a bigger platform as one fan. Yeah. I don't think I need to say nothing else. Hmm, this is one of my favorite parts. Why are you so Baltimore? I don't know, I'm trying to do something traumatic, but whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> what I do is I ask two questions. Well, I ask you one question, you only can pick two answers. Yeah. That's it. And they won't judge you on if you're from Baltimore. They are. You ready? Yeah. I'm about to lose this. <laughs> Better chicken spot. Wawa's or Royal Farms? Royal Farms. You sure? Yeah. I, I, I'm, that's what I'm sticking with, Royal Farms. You sure? Chicken spot? Yeah. yeah. I might not go. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to see if I can change it yeah. my mind. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if it's about. It is what it is. Like, yeah. I mean, okay, I mean, I'm going to leave it up to you guys in the comments below to say if he's from Baltimore or not, or if you agree with him. Remember, the winner 
uh, the best comment was a free item every week. So, is Larry from Baltimore? Is it YY? Is it Royal Phones? Alright, we're gonna let we're gonna get back to that, Larry. They're gonna tell me. Baltimore is not known to be the most friendly, friendly, friendliest town. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, a lot of kids have been getting murdered lately. Um, which is very unfortunate. You know, uh, kids, women are definitely supposed to be out of bounds, you know, when it comes to anything you know, with anything like um, violence and uh, but needless to say, you know, as of the last two or three years, it's really been big with children um, not being in a safe space. Let's just say a safe space. What would you tell kids watching this? Oh, that's a deep question. I, I, I feel like if I had to tell kids anything is, I would tell them that anything is possible. Like anything, whatever you want to do. Um, I feel like every day somebody's coming out to tear down a dream that you have. And, you got to build a wall in front of it because especially sadly in a place like this where we do have all the things that you just said, um, it's always something that's trying to tear down what you're trying to put up. So you got to really believe in your dream and believe in yourself um, more than anything. So I want to tell you to chase your dreams, but don't really just chase your dreams because when you do that, your dreams can like start to fall down or start with saying, hey, I want to be a doctor. Then it's like, hey, I want to be go to the NBA or now, now you get a little older, you don't think that happens is, hey, now I want to own a house. Or then it comes, I want to get this car. And so when you start chasing these smaller dreams, um, it just doesn't give you any any path into the future um, of what you really want to do because you're just going from here to here to here to here. Instead of chasing something so great that it forces your everyday life to um, start to align itself with the goal that you're trying to get to. So instead of so much telling a kid to chase their dream, um, I'd rather say believe that anything is possible and never stop believing and never stop um, being creative and using the creative mind that you have as a kid that um, allows you to believe and think of all the wildest things you want to do. After the death of Freddie Gray, the climate change for the African American culture, dare I say respectfully, it reminded me of maybe what we were reading in the books in the 60s um, and the 70s. Um, we were fighting for respect, power, knowledge. Um, fast forward to now, uh, even though we're representing one municipal, you know what I mean, on this current interview, um, where do you see Baltimore going with the, the, you know, the rising of the black CEO, the, the, the collective bargaining, you know, almost like the black Wall Street-ish type mentality that we are now, you know, having in our generation um, fighting for uh, the next generation. You know, what, what, what do you see Baltimore being in the next five years? So, especially with the part you say about the black CEO, one thing I think that Baltimore is going to do, um, especially in the black community, is really expand on something that they've already built, that a lot of people, um, unless you're in the community, you really don't know too much about it. And it's Baltimore's tech startup community. Um, it's really a great thing. There's a lot of incubators. There's a lot of um, different things that allow people who may not even know what a startup is. Um, and I encourage everybody to Google it and really understand like startup businesses and stuff like that. But it's a space in Baltimore right now for that. And I really hope that that expands um, and allows a lot of these kids that are inner city kids to actually see how a lot of these big businesses, when you think about the Facebooks, the Airbnbs, the Googles, how they become big businesses and like what it takes to come up with the idea, um, learn how to put that idea on paper packs you in a way that you can sell pieces of this idea, which is your intellectual property, to investors who then give you capital and take that, you can take that capital and build your business to what you want it to be. Um, so I'm really hoping that that small hub in Baltimore right now, mm -hmm. in the next five years, grows and expands and really opens up some programs in the schools mm -hmm. to really catch these kids young, to, to show them this way. And it kind of like just helps re, um, reiterate what I already said, that anything is possible. And show them how these companies get there. So that's that's. I think you said you said that back in the sixties we fought for like respect, power, and knowledge. And I think I don't want to speak too generally about everybody, but I feel like right now we're at a point where we're really fighting for respect. We're really fighting for power, but um, we got to do that same fight for knowledge. Um, so I encourage everybody pick up a book, read. I read diligently every day almost. So um, fight for that knowledge because. You don't ever want to think that you know it all. The moment you think you know it all, you're the dumbest person in the world. Mm. 
But with that being said, so I won't be dumb. Because I'm going to read my books. I read books monthly. But I might have to step my game up, brother Larry. Um, being that you have so much passion for Baltimore, even though you're not from Baltimore. Um, do you still see yourself doing business here? Like, I mean, I know we talk about expansion. You travel the world. Um, seeing different cultures. Um, I'm also going to go on, out on the record and say stop the Asian hate. You know, any hate whatsoever. Um, just wanted to put that on the record. I think that's horrible. Uh, what's going on to any minority or any person, but definitely people of minority as they fight for power, struggle, and stuff like that. But with so much tension and good stuff, we talk about a lot of good stuff, we talk about a lot of bad stuff. Um, do you still see yourself being an advocate for the Baltimore community? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my business will always be headquartered out of Baltimore. Um, anything car related that I ever do is going to be headquartered out of Baltimore. Um, my shop is in Annapolis, Maryland, because it was a central location to where I grew up at. Grew up at. But um, any larger business, my tech company is already um, based out of Baltimore, so yeah, I definitely will stay in Baltimore. The whole car club scene really shaped a part of my life, um, and just seeing that culture in Baltimore, nothing. Anybody that's been to Drew Hill Park on a Sunday back then knows that it was literally like a music video every day, and that was some of the greatest parts of my life. So yeah, so I, I owe it to Baltimore for who I am right now. Um, a lot of that. So, yeah, anything car related I ever do will always be headquartered out of Baltimore. So, Larry, we got to let people know how to get in contact with you. Like, do you have social media? Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, um, Wheels by Larry, um, W H E E L Z B Y L A R R Y. Make sure put the C. Yeah, got to be the C. <laughs> Is that on all social Wheels media platforms? Yes. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, anybody want to shout out? on Facebook if you want to get me. It's Larry Springs Jr. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Anybody you want to shout out? Anything you want uh, I just want to shout out everybody that's just been with me on this journey. I know I've been up and down and just really chasing the dream for a long time, and I'm never going to stop. Um, and I want to thank my wife. Um, she's I'm blessed enough to have in-house counselor and therapist, so she's definitely helping me out. Listen, man, Larry did an amazing job on this interview. I hope y'all catch that. Maybe rewind it, click share, like, subscribe, do something with those little buttons down beneath. If you like what Larry's saying or anything, or you want to support Rem Source Motorsports, the description is down low. And hopefully I'll see you next week. You're going to be here, right? You're going to be here next week? See you next week.